Okay, so this is video number two where I'm going to actually begin the disassembly of your engine, JP. I've got, before I turn the camera on, I've got all the tools out here that I'm going to need to at least begin the disassembly process. Now I just have to think through, obviously I'm going to remove the carb first. And in that first video I had this mat flipped the other way. Um, it was the darker side of the mat and I kind of started looking at it and I'm like, I don't know if that's going to be any better or not, or if I should use this light side. Now it's like, I look at the light side and it doesn't really seem like it's all that much better, but I kind of like the look of the dark side. Um, so this carb is just held onto the intake manifold by two screws. And these are JIS, Japanese Industry Standard, I believe is what that stands for. Screw heads. So I've got one tub here that's going to be like my main single things I've been. And also off camera. Um, so now I'm going to, I think, I've got four screws here for the intake manifold, and then I've got these intake pipes, so I think I'm going to use, this is a number 12, number 12, and I did pre-loosen these things off camera. See, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get my fingers in there, if it's going to be one of these deals where I have to just kind of do that. I think it is. I don't it. This is really a finger finger friendly engine. Now I've got my other bins up in the kitchen there. I'm gonna have to go grab them so I can start taking off you know, these uh, cylinders or the uh, intake manifolds and make sure I put them in the right container. Before I get there I want to just get these headers all loose. I think they're, it's hard to tell when they're completely unthreaded. Now of course they're just press fit into the intake manifold so in theory I might be able to just, I just want to see if it'll kind of pull out. It should, and I can actually get my fingers on this one a little bit. I just want to see if it'll pull out to some degree. Give me a little bit more room. I'm going to do the best I can to keep this in the center here so that it's centered in the screen. But sometimes it just doesn't always work out. Boy, that's just, you know, it's not going to get your fingers in there, and it's not like I had big hands either. Looks like that one's, yeah, see that one is very obvious, that one came completely out. Yeah, that one's out. Now, since this is upside down, this is cylinder one, two, three, four. So I'm going to run in that kitchen real quick, and unless I brought those bins in here, no, I think I'm going to run in that kitchen real quick and set my four cylinder bins out up here. You won't really be able to see them. Here's my bins. I went and got you know, ones that were deep enough 
and clear so I can easily see. Um, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do it like this. One, two, three, four. That way. I don't know if that's going to want to just come out or not. See, I got that. You have to make, wait till I get the manifold off. I did break these loose already too. So where's my main? Guess I can put these up here like this. It'll still be the same. Now this is a. I don't think it says 2.5 millimeter. 2.5 millimeter ground hex. These are very precise. Much more precise than your standard L wrenches for some strange reason. I don't know why. Cost, I guess, is one thing, but I don't know why they wouldn't make these L wrenches as precise. Okay. There we go. All right. So this is number one. I've labeled the lids and. Two, three. Let's just go over here. One, two, three. So one and three are on the same side. Even on this side, okay. Maybe this one's got one more thread in there. Okay, so intake manifold is off. Now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and remove, put it like this, and now that means I got to go one, two, three, four. Does that make it any easier for me to remove these? Same size here, 12. Go ahead and take these exhaust stubs off. I should have my gloves on. It's the temperature, it's not the temperature necessarily here, it's the, this is number four. It's the humidity in this state is uh, starting to get really, really dry. And it's starting to really, my hands and body are still just used to Florida humidity and my fingers get cracked and I really need to just stop what I'm doing here and go and put gloves on to protect my skin. It's one of those things where I get these cracks right at this part of my thumb here and you never really understand or realize how important your thumb is to you until you have some little thing, some little thing like that that constantly reminds you of shit. I really use my thumb a lot to put pressure on and it really hurts when you do that and you've got some kind of little thing happening like that. I think this is interesting. Out of the four cylinders, huh. yeah, out of the four cylinders so far, this number two one, the header is header is much more carboned up on. Again, I guess I'll do it like 
this. And it seems to indicate this particular head was running a little leaner. I don't know that I noticed that when I pulled the plug. But plugs can be changed and exhaust headers, well I guess they could also, but typically people don't go changing those things around. So we'll make a mental note of that. Alright, so that's our intake manifold removal and install or removal and headers off of this. And I think I'm gonna end this video right here. The next uh, thing I'm gonna do, I think this is this base here mounting base is probably going to be one of the last things I remove just because it's works it, it provides me such a good platform here for doing this so the next thing I'm going to do here is just start removing the cylinders I'll probably take all the plugs out again and take it from there